Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Kathy and I'm a Hospice Simco volunteer. I spend time with families and children who know someone who either has a serious illness, is dying, or maybe has already died. We talk about thoughts and feelings and emotions. Sometimes these things are really hard to talk about and it makes us sad. But at hospice, we have great activities and games and books that we use to help us make these conversations a little bit easier. I'm going to share some of those with you today. Are you ready? The book I'm going to read to you today is called Lifetimes, The Beautiful Way to Explain Death to Children. And it's by Brian Maloney and Robert Ingpen. There is a beginning and an ending for everything that is alive. In between is living. All around us, everywhere, beginnings and endings are going on all the time. With living in between. This is true for all living things, for plants, for people, for birds, for fish, for trees, and for animals, even for the tiniest insect. Nothing that is alive goes on living forever. How long it lives depends upon what it is and what happens while it is living. Sometimes living things become ill or they get hurt. Mostly, of course, they get better again. But there are times when they're so badly hurt or they're so ill that they die because they can no longer stay alive. This can happen when they are young or old or anywhere in between. It may be sad, but it is the way of all things and it's true for everything that is alive. For plants, for people, for birds, for fish, for trees, for animals, even for the tiniest insect. There are lots of living things in our world, and each one has its own special lifetime. Trees that are tall and strong grow slowly, standing in the sunshine and in the rain. Some of them live for a very long time indeed, as long as a hundred years or more. That is their lifetime. Rabbits and mice grow up in only a few weeks. Then they go on to live for a year or two, crunching up carrots and nibbling at cheese until they grow old and very tired, and it is their time to die. That is how it happens to be for rabbits and mice. It is the way they live, and it is their lifetime. Flowers and vegetables planted as seeds at the beginning of the spring when the earth is warm, grow quickly to live through the heat of summer. The days pass and they become old during autumn when it is cooler. Then when winter comes and it is cold, they die. It is the way they live. That is their lifetime. Butterflies live as butterflies for only a few weeks. Once they have dried their wings, they flutter and flit from leaf to flower. At first, they're bright and quick, but as time passes, they begin to slow down until finally they can go no further. They rest for a while, and then they die. That is the way butterflies live, and that is their lifetime. Birds grow up quite quickly too. It is often no more than a few months from the time they hatch until they are strong enough to fly and feed themselves. How long they live after that seems to depend upon their size. Mostly, the bigger they are, the longer they will be alive. That is the way birds live, some for as long as 50 years, and others no more than two or three. But however long, it is their lifetime for each one. Fish, swimming in lakes and rivers or in the sea, can be so tiny it's hard to tell that they're there at all, or so big that the only way to describe them is enormous. Again, a 
as far as we know, it seems that the smaller they are, the shorter will be their lifetime. But that is how it is for fish. Their lives can be as little as a day or so, or as long as 80 or 90 years. It is the way they live, and those are their lifetime. And people? What about people? Well, like everything else that is alive, people have lifetimes too. They live for about 60 or 70 years, sometimes even longer, doing all the things that people do, like growing up and being grown up. It can happen though, just as it does with all other living things, that people become ill or they get hurt. Mostly, of course, they get better again, but there are times when they are so badly hurt or they're so ill that they die because they can no longer stay alive. It may be sad, but that is how it is for people. It is the way they live, and it is their lifetime. So, no matter how long they are, or how short, lifetimes are really all the same. They have beginnings and endings, and there is living in between. That is how things are for plants, for people, for birds, for fish, for animals, and even for the tiniest insects everywhere. I hope you enjoyed reading that story with me today. We're going to do a fun activity about lifetimes. I'll meet you over at the activity table. I hope you enjoyed reading Lifetimes with me. It's one of my favorite books at hospice, and that's because it really gets me thinking gets me thinking about how many living things there are all around us. I bet there's even too many to count. And what I really like to do is think about those living things and imagine what their lifetimes might be. So if you think that's something that you'd have fun doing as well, there's a really simple activity that you can do to keep track of some lifetimes. And what I did was I made a little journal that I have called My Lifetime Stories. This is really, really easy. All you need is a journal, just a blank journal, or mine has lines in it, that's fine too. If you don't have one of those, just use some loose paper, anything will do. And then I used crayons in the story that I'm gonna show you today, but you can use crayons or markers or pencil crayons or pencils, whatever you prefer. And the other thing I did was I just tied a little piece of ribbon onto the spirally part of this book so that I could mark the pages where my stories are. So that's something that you could do too. So I'm not going to do one with you right now, but I'm going to show you one that I've already done, just so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So I thought it might be kind of interesting to think about the lifetime story of wedding flowers. So this is my little lifetime story of wedding flowers. So I start out with the wedding flowers growing in the greenhouse. And as that's happening, I would imagine that there are all kinds of brides and grooms all over that are imagining their perfect wedding and all of the things that are going to make their wedding perfect. And that's the flowers and the cake and the dress and the people and all the love that everybody's going to feel. And then on the wedding day, the beautiful wedding flowers are worn or carried by the bride or groom. They're part of the ceremony. Everyone can see them in the pictures and then they're decorating the reception space. So when there's a wedding, there are usually flowers everywhere. Then after the wedding, I imagine that people make different decisions about what they're gonna do with their flowers. I think some people might take them to the hospital if someone they know is in the hospital, or maybe they'll take them to hospice. We always like to have nice pretty flowers around at hospice. Someone might decide to take them and lay them on the grave of someone that they love who has died and who couldn't be at the wedding. So that's just a nice remembering thing to do. Or they might take them home and try to dry them so that they could keep them for longer or press some of them between the pages of heavy books. But eventually, after all the colors gone from the flowers, they will start to dry up and they'll die. So the petals will fall off and everything will get limp and dried out. So after their beautiful lifetime, the flowers will die. 
And that's the end of my imaginary lifetime story about wedding flowers. So that's just an idea of something that you could do. But I have a few other ideas that I wrote down at the beginning. I thought it would be fun to keep a few pages blank just at the beginning so I could write down some of my ideas. So I already did wedding flowers. I thought, what if we imagine the life of ants in an ant colony, or bees in a beehive? Or you could imagine the life of a character like a clown who works at birthday parties or parades. And if you'd rather do something that's real life as opposed to imaginary life, you could do research about someone from your family, someone who's died like a grandparent or a great-grandparent. The only thing that you have to remember is that if it's going to be a lifetime story, it has to have a beginning, a lifetime, and an end. So I hope you have fun creating your own lifetime stories, either with your imagination or doing some research into some real people. Thank you.